What's up? What's up? What's up? Live and direct in living color, if you will. Ryan Inman, Rick Paulton, whole damn edge a lot of podcasts. <laughs> How's it going, brother? Uh, pretty good, man. Just um, tired. <laughs> tired. Yeah, I hear that. I'm about, I'm about to start a vacation Saturday for like eight or nine days. Wow. So I, it's a vacation from one job, so I can work the other job more to raise money to go up to see Kane Otter. It's a thing. Well, Speaking good, of what, oh, go ahead. Good news for me on that. Mm-hmm. Is that Saturday? That's a Saturday event. Yeah, I get paid the Thursday two days before. There you go. We so I, I got this to from um, Horror Effects Creations. There's the guys that made the um, Ghost Case and Hawk I had too. Mm-hmm. That one. Looks um, I, did, good. I didn't order it from them, but um, they made it. I got I got it on eBay, but um, yeah, this looks pretty sweet to complete my um my part. Or my my NES costume, so I could uh, compete against the what, 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 the not South Jersey Jason. God damn it, St. John's, Michigan Jason, who is not commented yet, but I'm sure he'll be here shortly. Mr. Rob Dowell. Rob Dowell, yeah. So I will be competing against him in the cosplay contest, the, the the first official one I was in. Hey, what's up, Sean? Sean says you guys. What's up, brother? Oh no, yeah, he's on. It says Rob's watching. So yeah, he's there. Karen is watching. How you doing, Karen? So how are things going? We already went through that. Did you do anything fun and exciting this week? Watch anything cool or well, I had three days off for the first time since last January. Surprise. Oh, there you go. Um Oh, you had a birthday since the last time we talked. Yeah, you yeah. did. I'm a year oh. older in one week. <laughs> yeah, happy birthday. And um so, Thank you. Um, my friend Eric's birthday today. Today, he probably—I don't think he watches us so, because he sucks. <laughs> how old? How old is he today? If you know. He is the same as you, I think. Oh, right. Okay. So he was. Uh, he, I'm. I'm a little bit. You're 44. Yeah. Yeah, he's 44. Because I'm 44, and we'll be 45 in May. Because yeah. we're only we're only like six months apart. Yeah. See, I've I've decided I've come to the realization too, especially once you reach the age that we're at. Birthdays. Hey, what's up, Nina? Birthday's just another birthday. I'm only gonna start celebrating in years where my age is the same caliber as a gun. So this year, (laughs) so this year counted. Next year counted. Uh, No forty six. And then when I turn (laughs) fifty, it'll count. But then we're gonna have to wait till I'm three hundred fifty seven after that. So So fifty will be the last birthday. (laughs) <laughs> right on, right on. That, 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 that's that's a strange thing. So, huh. so well, let's go ahead. We can get this part out of the way and get it over with. Um, Bucks lost. Yeah, they did. Not because told Baker you they Mayfield. would. Not because of Baker Mayfield, but they no, lost. no, no. It wasn't because him doing exactly what he does in any high pressure game and throwing interception at the end of the game rather than drive the no. team down to win. <laughs> What 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 else can he do? He's trying to win the game, then. Not Gotta throw the pick. It. He's done it twenty seven times. Where's he gonna Where's he gonna throw it? Not to the other team. I mean, come uh, on, man. <laughs> it's not It's not like they shut him down though. He had like three hundred seventy yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, he's he's done that. And when it comes down to it, and he has the ball in his hand at the end, Tom Brady wins the game, and Baker Mayfield throws the interception. Who's available and is better than him for them to go after? Him? Oh, there's nobody. Yeah. He's going to get paid. And, and, you know, on the flip side of this coin, I was in another room or whatever chat on Facebook, and they're like, oh, he sucks. He's horrible. He's horrible. No, he doesn't suck. But he's not as good as some of these Baker Mayfield lovers think he is, and he's not as bad as these haters think he is. Mm-hmm. He's going to get $40, 50000000 mm, No. I think so. Just I think because he- of the lack of availability. I think Unless he, he really likes really likes Tampa Bay and doesn't test the market. I think hey, what's he, up, Zigzag in the house? Aren't you supposed to be in, I'm in Atlanta or on your way there? From Death Care Society, you got Zig in the house. He's uh, They're going to be doing um, Days of the Dead Oh yeah, yeah. in Atlanta. They're bringing the, the game show down there. I hope they finally get some video of it. Yeah, I'd like to see that. I know. I just, I'm just so in, intrigued. So, I don't know. I think he's a five for 150 kind of guy. Right on. So I wouldn't pay him more than that. Oh no, you wouldn't. But I'm saying, just the you know, you've seen all the money that um 
dude from Minnesota. I always forget his name. Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins guy. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you get the you get the luxury to fly in, huh, Zig? You don't have to drive across the country. Well, like a, here's like, the advantage though that Cousins has had. He keeps signing the short term deals and maximizing his money. But Cousins signed originally a four year deal though. No, originally got tagged, then tagged again. No, no, I'm saying when he finally got free because yeah. yeah. you know. Yeah, and, but, and and because he was the, one of the only good free agent quarterbacks ever, you know, he got paid an obscene amount of money. And Baker might do the same thing. I mean, again, I think, if, he, if he likes playing down there, no, no doubt, go Lions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, from here on out, absolutely. Yeah, definitely, Karen. Follow up Death Curse Society. Go to their page. They're, they're fucking awesome. They're the reason that we're doing this. We're trying to be like them. <laughs> and Kansas City ruined uh, the game I wanted. I wanted Buffalo and Baltimore, man, so bad. Yeah, Kansas City ruined it. I I think Baltimore's going to kick their ass. I do too. I hate I hate Buffalo. I hate Buffalo. We went through that. So so who's your pick in the NFC then? I want the Lions to win, but I just don't know if 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 their offense is that good enough to stop that D in San Francisco. I want Detroit to win, but I don't think they're going to. I think they. I, I. I think the way that um, it all depends if Debo plays number one, and uh, and how healthy he is, and um, what um, I think I think the Lions are going to win that. I think they're. I, I think judging by how Green Bay competed with them, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I, I think they could win. They could definitely win. They What's really the line on that. They really fucking blew it. I don't know. I don't have it in front of me. I got yeah. so frustrated with football. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not even going to look at it until Sunday, man. Well, this is our. This is our. Our. our well, no, we're going to probably. Yeah, yeah. This will be our penultimate um, football preview before the mm-hmm. thing. No, we got two weeks after that before the Super Bowl. No, but I mean, like our, mm-hmm. talking about it. Oh, about these games. There, yeah. There's only there's these two games and then one more. Yeah, but there's two weeks between. Yeah, but there's no reason to predict the game. You know what I mean? Like I'm right. talking about here on the show. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is our penultimate football yeah. preview. Penultimate. I think that's a cool <laughs> word. So I don't know. <laughs> I know it's boring, but I mean Baltimore and San Francisco, the two one seeds, are probably who's gonna go. I think it's gonna be Baltimore and Detroit. I hope it is, and I hope Detroit wins it all. I think it's gonna be Baltimore and Detroit. But I can see I can see a world where e- either one of those four teams win, to be honest. I mean, I'm not I wouldn't be shocked. Right now, though, I'm I'm in the mind. I think Baltimore is a heavier favorite than San Francisco. Anyone but Kansas City, and I'm happy. <laughs> you don't want to see T. Swift and uh, what's no. his name? Um, uh, the other Kelsey. No. Joseph Scott is the man. Ernest Cloud, what's up, brother? All it's right. Yeah, yeah, so- I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Football gross. You know what? Just talking about that. Nick. <laughs> oh, you got your your fancy new glass there. I seen that on Facebook. What does that say again? Oh, I'll put it up in a moment. For the for the camera. This is what I have to say about uh, football after the Bucks lost. <laughs> <laughs> and there goes the last shit I have to give. I gave the last shit I gave. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? What's up? <laughs> All righty then. So, so what, what? Karen says, "What are you drinking?" Um, uh, he's drinking. Um, it's a local. I think it's a, no. Brew Dog's not local. They're 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 a brewery, but they're all over the country. They're like crowdfunded breweries. It's pretty cool. They and, started uh, out in um Scotland, no? Yeah, overseas. Yeah, yeah. and um. Ryan likes the non-alcoholic beers. This is a, one of the better non-alcoholic beers you can get. JP is usually the first comment. He's late. After the show tonight, join um join his live on YouTube when they premiere their uh, latest episode of Cine Nerds. They're going to be reviewing a movie. Its name escaped me. Radioactive oh, Radioactive Dreams. Right. Yeah. yeah. I didn't get a chance to watch it yet. Uh, Karen says beer. Shoot, she's drinking champagne. Well, right on. Well. <laughs> Well, Rick saw after the 2020 Super Bowl, he was we watched at the same place. I had a bottle of champagne for that one. Yeah, we did. Yeah, because I liked the end of that game. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So, so 
So we recorded another uh, wrestling episode. We'll, we'll have that out later on. Uh, we re- reviewed the Royal Rumble 1997. So we'll have that probably on my page. And um, that went a little bit better this time. I think you guys will like it. I got, we got over 100 views on that other one. I don't know who the fuck watched it, but somebody did. I still haven't had a chance to see it. Yeah, see, you didn't even watch it. (laughs) I want to, though. I want to. Yeah, watch the second one, because the first one's not so good. I'll watch Um, it. Sean says he remembers the 1997 Royal Rumble well. Uh, Well, check out our review of it. Um, It was uh, me and my my nephew and my kid. Um, It was was Rick and a couple of Rick and a couple of Marks. That should be the name of the goddamn show, because right now I'm calling it uh, The Whole Damn Enchilada Presents the the, the, uh, uh, Wrestling Podcast Yet to Be Named. (laughs) Rick and a couple marks. There we go. That might be it. We, we that's on us. So we got a we got a, a workshop that. Yeah. So anyway, we're here tonight to talk about Friday the Thirteenth Part Three to finish up our odd number reviews. All of these weren't done live. Some of these were done, and you can find them on iTunes now. Since I got on iTunes, you can find them on um Spotify. Our reviews. We 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 uh, the first two we did um Friday the Thirteenth reviews happened to be odd numbers. So we said. Well, fuck it. We're going to just go through and do yeah. all the odd numbers first because we're weird like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this is our last odd number. It is. We can get into some of the even numbers. And I have a good idea for uh, when we begin the even numbers, we should put a poll up and let a, the pe- people decide which are the first even ones they want let us the to Let the people decide. Yeah, we can let do the that. people. I don't know how to put a poll up, though. I tried. I'll figure it out. Yeah. My my kid Bolton, my kid's a, an admin or whatever on that page. He's supposed to be able to do that, but he ain't never did shit. I'll take a look. McKesson Triple Stout is a great English beer. I am a big fan of stouts and big stouts, so I probably would really dig that. I used to love me some stout in the wintertime, man. Uh, Sean says four with the goat Ted Ted White. Um, good choice. Good good yeah good good choice. I mean obviously um Ryan agrees with you. That's his favorite, Jason. And this Jason today is a. Uh, I got my notes buried. Um, so gonna, I got notes. You got notes, paper notes, old just notes. like me, old school. So anywho, so we got uh, a lot of people think this is uh, the greatest Jason. He, he's up there in the discussion, Richard Brooker. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's just get right into it. Fuck it. We'll just yeah. you know. So we got the the directed by Stephen Miner. Yeah, uh, only director to come back. He's the only one to do two. Okay. I did not know that. I kind of maybe knew that and didn't forgot it or something. Um, Siba Miner did part two, part three. He did House. Yes. He did H2O, Halloween H2O. He did Lake Placid. Uh, I've seen something that said he did the 2008 remake of Day of the Dead. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure of that either. I got a question mark next to that. Anybody knows uh, if that's a true story, you could uh, comment your comment in the comments. I will say, though, I, I am a fan of Halloween H2O. I am, too. I, I dug it. I dug it for sure. And Lake Placid's good, man. I don't remember it. I saw it, though. Yeah, it's it's pretty sweet. Um, Sean likes H2O as well. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. H2O was sweet. It was the one after that that was kind of iffy. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, right? Uh. <laughs> and um, he also directed Soul Man. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that. Yeah, we, we, I, th- I don't think we're allowed to watch that movie anymore, though. No. <laughs> I think that's frowned upon. I think they canceled it. They canceled it. Um, uh, this uh, movie had Tracy Savage, who we met. We mm-hmm. met in um, Blairstown. Mm-hmm. Um, Michigan graduate. Uh, right. Yeah, I gave her some shit about that. And can't give her no shit right can't now. Can't give her no shit right now, that's for sure. By the way, thank you to the Los Angeles Chargers for getting that guy the fuck out of there. <laughs> yeah. That is a great uh, situation for him, though. I think that team is outstanding, but they just had a lot of bad injuries. They just – that roster stack. JP said Lake Placid is awesome. Yes. Yeah, right. Hey, Zig, if you're still there, um, what, what do you think about Harbo getting a, get, getting a job in the NFL? How do you feel about that? <laughs> getting another job in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. But um yeah, Tracy Savage, she uh shortly after this, she didn't act too much after this. She did um way later, Fanboy 13 a couple of years ago. But mm-hmm. um that that was probably more of a favor to people, you know, than anything. But she yeah. uh she 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 became a journalist. Mm-hmm. She actually covered um the Heidi Fleiss case as well as the OJ Simpson case. And in the OJ Simpson case, she made history because uh yeah. they tried that they had her testify and they tried to get her to reveal sources. 
and threatened her with the jail time. Right, which she can't do. And she refused. I don't know the name of the 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 law that you know that, that protects her, but yeah. um, th- there's a law that that protects her, and you yeah. know she, she doesn't have to give her sources. And you no. know, fuck you. No, and she no, was no, ready no. to get locked up for it, and yeah. um, she didn't, but she almost did. Nah, they, they would have got overturned. Oh, I know it would have, but I mean that doesn't mean she couldn't have went to jail right then. Yeah, and then had to get lawyers to fight it. And then she would she would have sued the shit out of them. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she probably that she probably was wanting to go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> so you had her, you had um. Paul Kratko, who was Rick, the, the, the final guy. Creepy Rick. <laughs> creepy Rick? You think he was creepy? A little bit. A little bit. I guess we'll get into that when we get more into the meat of the potatoes here. And, and is it just movie. me, or speaking of wrestling, does he kind of have a Hulk Hogan voice? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Speaking of his voice, though, he did the he did the narration for um, Sean Richards, yeah. who we also met in Blair, Blairstown, um, in memoriam film that he did of part three, which is really good. It's yes. free on YouTube. I imagine you... Uh, you guys uh, should check it out. Um, yeah, I imagine you guys would enjoy it is what I meant to say. Um, he He's a doctor, too, by the way, now. He's a chiropractor. I mean, he's got doctor in front of his name. I always hear chiropractors are like fake doctors, but, I mean, you know, hey, that's pretty cool. He should change his name to Paul Crackta, then. <laughs> no <Chiropractor>. shit, right? <laughs> that's free. You don't even got to pay us for that. No. <laughs> All right, so we had um, the, the three bikers, Ke- Kevin... O'Brien, mm-hmm. O'Brien, he was mm-hmm. loco. Uh, the late uh, Gloria Gloria Charles was Fox, mm-hmm. and um, Tracy Savage's cousin Nick. Yeah, they look just so so alike. Yeah, <laughs> Nick, Nick Savage, Nick Savage. Ali. Uh, famously, if you watch the show, the pickpocket from uh, Hill Street Blues. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah he, he was, was in a, a lot he of was in, um, he was in a lot of episodes of that show, and he was in a lot he was in a lot of like just TV shows and different things. Um, I got Larry Zerner. Yeah, uh, Shelly, he's an entertainment lawyer now, and he, he uh, he's been on a lot of podcasts talking about all the craziness behind the rights with Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, the whole what the whole Miller versus Cunningham thing. Yeah, the Miller versus yeah. Cunningham, and the video game stuff too. When that was going on, I remember he uh, posted on the forum actually, and then did a YouTube video about it. Right on, and uh, Dana Kimball, the final girl. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, that's pretty much the cast. Is there anybody I omitted that you would like to talk about? Yeah, the um, Vera. Oh, God, how did I miss her? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, had Vera. I don't remember her name because I don't have it on my notes. Rachel Howard is Chili, and then Chuck, the the two stoners. Yeah, the, 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 the female male um, uh, yeah. Chi and Chung. Yeah, that, that was the whole idea behind them. They wanted to do a Cheech and Chong kind of dynamic, and they, I think they succeeded. Well, we'll, we'll get. <laughs> that's funny, but you know, we'll get to that. <laughs> the introduction of the hawk, yes, Ernest. Yeah, this was well, the first time they brought the hawk into it. We're getting way ahead of ourselves. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So I mean, yeah, we're not going to do it scene by scene by scene, but yeah, yeah, like we did, you know, earlier before we were on video and doing it live. But I do want to cover little bits of this well you got the first 20 minutes of the movie yeah the first they, a recap of the last movie see they basically they just played the last like several minutes of part two instead of like a cool intro like part two had with like the campfire tale and everything right we, we just see a do rerun think, do you think they did that because they were short what they needed to be a uh feature film maybe <laughs> or lazy or both. Or both. Okay. But budget. It's free to use your own shit. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right. Now, see, this, I did. I do really like this movie. I like it a lot. Um, it's not one of the best ones though. But we'll we'll, we'll get into that later. A lot of people think it is, and I don't get it. I mean, it, I it's one of the best. Have your friends over, pop some popcorn. We'll throw this movie on. Shit's gonna happen. I love. It. I've seen it in theater more than once. Yeah, I love it in a the theater with the three D glasses. It's it's a blast. Um, I'm I'm gonna tell you this, man. Um, when I was a teenager, when I first got these movies on VHS, VHS, dating, yeah, dating myself now. When I used to rent them from the the the, the, the video store, that yeah, was me. I, I ended up buying them all like on VHS when I was like 17, 18 years old. Oh, okay. Um, this one was probably one of my more watched ones. And this is one of the ones I've seen more than the others, too. Yeah. Three, four, and five. Um, th- three, three, four, and five were, like, the ones I just 
watched a ton. I remember watching this one a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I had a different opinion of it then than I do now, but again, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, but yeah, they, they just played the last several minutes of part two with no real like <laughs> segue into it. We just see, and then it just goes into a scene in the grocery, you know? Yeah, yeah. Hey, which is cool stuff. That was some funny shit. See, now, um, and we get Al Bundy's buddy from uh, No Ma'am. And, and I, that was the I was gonna put him down, and that was gonna be my fact about him was the fact that he was uh, he was in yeah. um, Married with Children. Yeah, now, <laughs> he he's kind of like likable, goofy, like like a lovable loser kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the wife's just nagging, you know, wife, yeah. just annoying. So we got stereotypes. Yeah, right off the bat. Well, that's that, what we do in horror movies. That's going to become a very big theme with this one. <laughs> Oh, and, totally. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, it, it, Now, the intro in and of itself in this store is okay. I think it goes on a bit too long. Again, they're trying to pad the minutes here, it feels like. Yeah, that and they, they had a couple of the 3D gags and yes. that they needed to do. And um, and, that's where Jason gets his um iconic outfit, too. That You know, mm -hmm. everybody talks about the hawk, but... Hanging on the clothesline. Yeah, you got that, the green shirt and the, the gray pants, and um, he used those for several movies. Like, I mean, that kind of went all the way through, right? Pretty much until, like, it's, it's seven, it's all tattered and destroyed. and then It's still the has, same outfit. It's just beat to shit. Right. And part 80 has a whole new wardrobe, though, because it's not nearly as beat. Yeah. But that's a long way down the road. <laughs> so, yeah, and we get all that. And they're already shoehorning the 3D shots in there for no real reason other than to have. I got this expensive-ass camera, and I got to use it. Yeah. And I don't really know how to use it. So yeah. you know, I think that was a part of it because the technology wasn't was pretty new with the camera that they were using, you know. And um the, you know, they 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 had a real hard time shooting a lot of those shots. And they had to have things at just the right angle, the right thing, and it was pretty pretty difficult. And I know the actors have said it's just very frustrating working under those conditions. Yeah, a lot of them, have, that's been the biggest, it, it, probably the only complaint from the actors was dealing with that 3D camera. Because mm -hmm. even though they have, you know, they're shooting this movie in 3D, they're still on a tighter budget than most feature films, so they're trying to rush through it mm -hmm. without really knowing what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, it's, I, I got that vibe, too. Mm-hmm. So now, once we get out of that scene, finally, like the movie starts, <laughs> and right away, and we need we need somebody to create like a little video clip, like a little audio, something like character bomb, character bomb. Oh character yeah, yeah, bomb. yeah, no doubt. Yeah, we get a character bomb. We get a big old one right here. <laughs> but I wanted I wanted to touch on something real quick that I forgot. You know, during the the, the we'll, we'll get back to that. We'll, we'll like rewind and then we'll fast forward. But um. That the news clip during the grocery store scene, yes, they say eight bodies were found. Mm -hmm. If you do the math, there's some people missing, man. Yeah, and but and Steve Miner has come out and flat out said, Paul's dead. Paul's dead, yeah. <laughs> you know, so you know, what did, did they just randomly throw out a number or did they what? I don't know because eight doesn't jive, man. Well, it's the next day, maybe that's just all they've found so far. Yeah, it could be. Because he be. does, but they do you know, say it was thrown across the whole thing. Yeah, know? he did start trying to, you know, taking bodies and putting them places and stuff. So right, little... and you know what, the cop wasn't in the in the the hut anymore, so they maybe yeah. they didn't find him. Right, and then there was like, there'd be that'd leave one more unaccounted. Mm -hmm. Who knows? All right, fast forward, character bomb. Yeah, character <laughs> bomb. And here we go, like all the stereotypes. <laughs> oh <laughs> like, yeah. We got like the jack guy, the pretty girl, the loser, and the potheads. Yeah, and, and, and like and, the and, and then your girl, all American girl next door. Yeah, the, the pretty girl was all the way live. Oh yeah, I absolutely. mean Jesus Christ, this is one yeah. of the, the the hottest girls in, in Friday the Thirteenth, in my opinion. She's up there. Oh yeah, she's she's gorgeous. She's she still looks good, sixty she does. years old. She does. Um. And I couldn't believe how young she was too in this film because then it's not like she looks old, but she no, looks no. more mature than like she's like 18, 19 when they made this fucking thing. Yeah, I think so. And she yeah, looks she used the money to go pay for college. I would have guessed she was probably in her early to mid twenties by then. At least she, she had matured faster than most teenage girls. 
So did we did we did we mention the 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 ne'er do well fat like loser friend? Oh, I did. Oh, okay. Loser. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then we pick up, you know, the, and the, we go to pick up the person of color. Yes, <laughs> we have one of those. The token Latina. Latina, and, yes. And this one, so who is also very attractive. Yeah, yeah, my dad. definitely more my type. Mama didn't want her to go, man. No. <laughs> she she had a premonition, I think, you know, about mm. what might 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 happen. So then, you know. They get to camp and the, oh, actually no! On the way there, we get they have to eat all the we, weed. We get bootleg crazy Ralph too. Oh yeah, yeah, bootleg crazy <laughs> Ralph. Because well, Ralph died and two, we need to replace yeah. him. I think this guy was pretty cool. I the have one thing was cool. He, I mean, he he has nothing on Ralph. You know, like there is no. Uh, <laughs> we definitely weren't going to see this guy again. You know. <laughs> See, the sidebar here, there is no, in all the horror movies and all the whatever out there, there is no town crazy better than Crazy Ralph. Yeah, that's it. He's number one. He is He's the number town one. crazy, period. Part three was 83 <laughs> or 84, Sean says, that he forgets. Uh, 80, 83. 83. I know I got it written on my stupid notes, but I couldn't remember. Or was it 82 and then part four was 84? I know it was one of those. It was either 82 or 83. Uh, I'm going to consult the notes. Yeah. Is 80, part, part four was 84 for sure. Part four was 84. And yeah, uh, part two was 82, right? Yes. 81. 81. 81. So yeah, 80. I, I'm saying it was 83. A 82, according to what I got here. Yeah. It was a, they rushed it. I wonder if it was like one of them that was filmed in like 82, but then was released in 83. No. It, it was it was eighty two, right on. Yeah, they rushed this one though, and you can yeah tell. release date August of eighty two. Yeah, all right. So they skipped a year. They didn't have an eighty three movie. Yeah, yeah. There's no. Uh, it's eighty three, <laughs> and I think it's eighty eight are the only two years where they didn't have one. Right on. Yeah. Ernest, Ernest says, "Dang, people calling me during the show pisses them off." So, <laughs> Well, tell whoever's calling you to, to join us. <laughs> so, yeah, we get the um, the scene where they have to eat the pot. No way, man. <laughs> That's a good line. Yeah. Just the way he says it. What's up, Kevin? Kevin Ellis from the Spooky Picture Podcast? The no! Show? No? Spooky Picture Show. God, motherfucking day. One day, one day I'll get it right. No, you won't. Oh, I was so no, you close. Won't. I was so close. <laughs> and Ernest says, yes, it was 82. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I, so, yeah, we get that little scene, and then they get to the camp, and then we get the all-American so, boy. So, speaking of the, the weed-eating scene, yeah. wh why was um Tracy Savage, why, why was she pregnant? That was kind of stupid, right? I agree. I don't think it It really... didn't add anything to the... It to doesn't. The, you know? You know, and I asked her this when we met her. Yeah, yeah, we talked her. about that. Yeah. yeah, she said she said that uh, she just thought that they want Jason to have a higher body count, kill the unborn kid, and they would. <laughs> so who knows? But that does that really doesn't even make sense to me. See, like, and it, the way it's again, she shoehorns that line in too. Mm -hmm. Like just like that's what happens when. But you're isn't she like, drinking later? Yeah, she's drinking later. I don't know about that. I don't no, know. Well, she, does, she she requests a beer but doesn't get it. Oh, yeah, on yeah, On second yeah, yeah, thought, yeah. I don't want that yeah. beer. But right. you know yeah. what I mean? So she was That's planning right. on drinking. Yeah. So I guess I guess in 82, it was okay to drink when you were pregnant, but it wasn't okay to, to smoke weed when you were pregnant. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Pregnancy has no place in horror. Nope, nope, nope. That's what Karen says. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it didn't make sense. It, it doesn't. The Again, only time it, pregnancy it, makes sense in horror is if you're, if you're carrying the... The, the the antichrist or something. Yeah. <laughs> if you're about to birth something totally evil on the planet. <laughs> See, now when they get to the camp, I gotta say this: like, I think the setting in general is pretty cool. I just wish they used more of it than the fucking barn so much <laughs> over and over and over and over and over. The barn that uh, unfortunately was burned down, right? Yeah, my well, house too is gone now. Just the chimney is, remains of the house. I heard that they um they were rebuilding that though. Really? Okay. I heard that they were rebuilding it, you know, uh, I don't know how true that is and I don't remember where I heard it, but I heard something. <laughs> ye old Higgins Haven. Yeah, the ye old Higgins Haven. 
So what do you feel about the setting? I thought it was I thought it was cool. I don't think there was enough of the lake. I and when we finally did get the lake way later, it's so oh small. man, it looked like a puddle. It looked like a pond. And it was all dirty and I mean I mean it's not a crystal clear lake anyway. You know, we we've no. seen it. We've actually touched it. <laughs> yes, we have. But but it, it definitely looks prettier than that. Oh, oh god, it was so gross. It's just, you know, that's what I tell everyone there. You know, I thought, oh, it might be creepy, but no, it just felt so peaceful and beautiful, actually, being at the real lake. Yeah, it was, it was, it was definitely um, like going to Mecca is what I tell yeah. people. Oh, it was for us, the Holy Land. <laughs> I've said it so many times. I'll say it again. If you ever even have a remote opportunity to go, go. Go. Got to go. Just go. Just go. Make it happen. And the best part is all the money goes to their sister camp that helps underprivileged kids and yeah. terminally ill kids get to go to summer camp. Like they don't keep a penny of that stuff. No. So it's great. Prices are reasonable too. Pretty much. Yeah. Except for the overnight stays. And it, I mean, even <laughs> that though, 700 something dollars to be able to spend the night. Yeah. I mean, I thought know, it was a little higher. I think it was, I think it's seven. Oh, maybe, maybe it depends like, on the night too. It yeah, does depend on the night. Like if you're Friday on Friday the thirteenth, there's a it's premium. over a thousand. Yeah, I yeah. think it is. I think you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Higgins <laughs> Haven, home of the window glitch. Sean says, <laughs> "Yeah, you Friday the thirteenth, the game fans game. will get that." Which yeah, I know I we got a couple of the in the in the audience tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad they patched that. It was super annoying. So. <laughs> I tried to play that game, and I, I just I'm, I'm just not good at video games. I liked I, I was able to play a couple of the where, where 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 you're playing against the computer, and I had fun doing that, and I got to do a couple cool kills, but I couldn't play against people because I sucked. So, <laughs> so once we're in the setting, and all the characters kind of get a feel for the area, two of them end up leaving, and then we get another character bomb. Oh, what's that? Ernest, that 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 was for the the overnight. But if you wanted to go just for a tour, they have some that are as less than two hundred bucks for some of them. Oh, some if of the you get tours? the half tour, it's like a hundred and hundred fifty, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like a hundred. It was like a hundred and yeah, barely a hundred bucks. I think. Yeah, I think it was a hundred bucks. I think yeah. that, that's for the half tour, and the full tour is a little yeah. less than two, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah, it's, oh, it's very reasonable. Yeah, so the, you know, to go for the day is really reasonable, and then they do yeah. events where they have alumni there sometimes and things like that. It's great, but the, the expensive one is for the overnight because it's limited and there's not too many spots. I'll well, go tell ahead. You this. Okay. Yeah, right before you know we jump back into that, just yeah. one more point. If you do get a tour, try to get one later in the day because you really want to see that place at night. Right. Yeah. We got when we went, we oh, got perfect. the dusk tour where we got there and the sun was still up and the sun mm -hmm. gradually went down. Mm -hmm. And by the time we left, it was pitch, pitch black. black. Pitch it was beautiful. Like the whole last leg of the tour was pitch black we got right. to walk we, the whole we area got to see we got to see every different we, way yes. it could look we got to walk that whole camp during the day and at night basically yeah it was and great. it was fantastic mm -hmm. so yeah so they go to the convenience store they being shelly and vera after shelly fakes his death <laughs> yeah because you know he's a prankster through the whole movie and that's what he does to try to get money and, and we get, not get to make friends rather we get our second and bigger, no, well, not as big, but second character bomb, and it's just so obvious that this is like kill count fodder character bomb. <laughs> <laughs> and again, no, I thought they they had they had a point. I mean, they were the, they're your secondary antagonists. Yeah, yes. We don't have uh, a tr tertiary antagonist no. antagonist in this, this one. one primary and secondary. Um, there's really, I think they really, other than kill count, only serve one big purpose that no one ever mentions any uh, idea if you're talking about dis disabling the van yeah yeah so you can't get out yeah right mm -hmm. so nobody ever mentions that though oh no i i picked up on that yeah um and then another... some adversity for the guys there i i thought they, they, they were cool so now this is 1982 mm -hmm. and it's a biker gang <laughs> yeah with a black and a white guy in the same gang. Ah, come on. <laughs> in well, 1982? You know, no, that, 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 well, in, in, um, in Warriors, they were in a biker gang, but they were like similar and they, yeah. they were represented. And well, New, New York. And, 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 and two of them were black, so it might have been a black biker gang. They just, that's their token white guy. That happens, man. Right. Like uh, when Dave Chappelle said, it's good to have a white guy in your group. When the shit goes <laughs> down, you got to have somebody that's able to talk to the police. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that, so, he, you know, that could have been it. Who knows? Who knows? But they're very stereotypical, too. Like, everybody is, like. <laughs> and then we get, speaking of token, like, Speaking of the stereotypes, they accuse uh, Olvira of paying with food stamps. Yeah. Which I think I, this came up on another show or something we were talking about recently. It might have been on DCS when they were talking, when it got, it might have got brought up on there when they hit part three on. I don't remember. But um, I think she was going to pay with the food stamps because she was ready to pay. And then all of a sudden, Shelly, let me get your wallet. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think that, you know, she might have had her pegged with that. <laughs> Now, here's a little one, um, and I don't have her name in front of me, but the chick that plays the cashier that says we don't take no food stamps mm-hmm. either is a world-class ballerina. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, famous, too. Nice. Now, I didn't know that. But I don't know anything about ballet. No. So. But she's like a world-class dancer, ballerina type person. Right on. So, don't know her name, but yeah, that's it. Yeah, see, we will get you half the facts here on yeah. the, the whole damn enchilada. We will learn you some shit, but we won't know all of it. Like, no. like earlier, whatever know. the fuck I was talking about. I, didn't I was like, it. yeah, I think this is a thing, but maybe it's not. <laughs> yeah, and again, the, the, these side characters, the Spiker crew, go back to the camp and they go straight to the fucking barn and dick around in the fucking barn. <laughs> no, because their plan was to, ironically, start the barn on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that would have spared us more scenes in the fucking barn. <laughs> right on, right on. So yeah, Paul's pissed off. Not Paul. Is it Paul? Yeah, Rick. Yeah, his, his first name, his real name, his shoot name's Paul. Rick, Rick, Rick's all pissed off because he's trying to get laid. That shit's getting all fucked up, and <laughs> his, his car's car. trashed. I mean, yeah. he's like, dude, what the hell? <laughs> and um. Oh, you got a second. We're going for a second there, huh? That's my third. I had one earlier. <laughs> well, I meant, I meant during the, the broadcast, if you will. That's a that's a good glass for IPAs. The, yeah. the shape, the shape, it like helps to release the uh, the, 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 the 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 aromas and whatnot. <laughs> back up if nobody saw it. And there and there goes the last shit I gave. <laughs> so. You needed the barn for all those great 3D effects. <laughs> right. and now, and speaking of the barn, th- these are, are are these our first two kills since the yes, uh, yeah, since, the, since Edna and Harold. Yeah. Well, at the time, you think it's three kills, mm-hmm. but for some reason, rather than chop off old Ali's head, Jason decides to chop his arm for an hour. Because <laughs> um, because Nick Savage is a bad motherfucker, man. Yeah, he is. <laughs> So yeah, we finally and it's it's for a movie that seems like it's 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 drawn out. It's not really that long, but it's still drawn out. It's a long time between kills. Yeah. We're kind of dormant here. It's a lot of like dialogue and these characters are on screen, but none of them really develop. To me, right. they don't. Mm-hmm. Like I'm gonna be I'm gonna be straight up, other than maybe Shelly a little bit, because he kind of has, you know, that lovable loser mentality like Harold, you know? Yeah. I don't give a fuck about any of these people. <laughs> I really don't. So, but is, is this cast is this cast better than um, Hatchet? Yes. I think so, too. I just, I just think they were just so... They didn't matter at all, man. No. Aside no. from the... The, the 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 friendship from the two guys and that, that yes, was pretty much I it. did appreciate that. But yeah, that and in this we get we get a similar thing. We get Vera and uh, Shelly. Vera Vera too a little bit, mm. a little bit. Yeah, the rest of but these most people, of like, like Andy and Debbie. I don't, I don't I don't give a fuck. He you had know? a cool kill though. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> there There's was a, some good kills in this. Let's really fin- let's finish up the run through and then we'll go through. Yeah. That. Because, you know, after this, these kills start to happen finally, and it Mm -hmm. just takes forever to get to the third act. Now, once we get there, though, business picks up, because I do enjoy the third act of this film. I do. Right. I I, I like the whole movie. It comes down to basically a two-person show, Mm -hmm. and I think it's quite good. 
the chase is very long, but it keeps you interested. Mm-hmm. And I think we talked about this on the final girl episode. This is like the longest like final chase scene in one of these movies. Yeah, and one of the better ones too. I agree. This is this was a highlight of the movie. I I got a feeling this might be on your top five. I I, th- I think you might be on this. Spoiler something. alert. <laughs> You know, and we'll get there soon because there really isn't too much to talk to about story wise in this. No, you know, we've all seen this one. Everybody, you know, if if you haven't, what the fuck are you watching for? So, yeah. what are what are your thoughts before we get too far? Um, on uh, what is the final girl's name? Dana Chris, Kimmel. No, Chris that's Higgins. Her, Chris, Chris, and Jason's encounter. Like, what happened there? What do you What do you think? Oh, yeah, I have a special note for that. So we're gonna um, we're gonna say we'll save that. No, we can talk about it. Okay, now. okay. Because it did, doesn't make either of my list because I put it in its own category. Right. I hate it. Right, right. Because two things, like I don't think Jason would. I mean, he might like crazy monster get enamored with pretty girl, maybe. So, but I don't think there's no way in hell she lives. Of course not. <laughs> if it wasn't, if it wasn't meant to be a sexual assault then why didn't he just kill her no it definitely was and it, yeah but here's the thing though you don't want it to be though because you want ugh. I, I mean of, I guess, it's, it's just kind of a waste it is it's just it didn't need to be there right on you know it could have it could have been more effective if she just got had to run from him and got away by the skin of her teeth or something. Does it, you know? does the does the dream scene come up later in your uh, top five, bottom five? Maybe. Okay, right. No, it's cool. I just if it didn't, I was going to talk about it now. But okay, go ahead. It does. Right, cool. <laughs> and, and I don't have that written down, so I wanted to say it out loud because yeah. I definitely want to talk about that. There's... We're going to talk. Okay, about good. It. <laughs> so uh, why don't we just get right to the five? Okay, yeah, we could do that because we all know what happens. I mean, the, the, you know, the this movie was one of the, um, and, and um, I wanted to say, um, Brooker was Jason throughout the whole thing except for one scene. For those one scene. that don't know, yeah. and now that guy's out doing um, cons and he's signing, so you can get a Friday the Thirteenth Part Three signature from a Jason. Mm-hmm. He was um the the hanging hanging scene. He did that good stuff. scene too. Oh yeah, totally cool. Yeah, yeah, you know, difficult, especially probably back then. But um, that's that's the only thing he did. I think that um, and that and that Brooke, before you continue, that was that was Mike DeLuna. Mike DeLuna. I didn't say okay. Yeah, that's what I meant. I thought I said I thought I said it. But okay. So the five things. Five things you liked about the movie. Five things you didn't like about the movie. I'm gonna do my top five first. Okay. Because these are easier to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number five would be the headstand kill. Yeah, it's really sweet. Andy's kill. And also a little bit, I'll, I'll mention it, the head crush kill, too. It was pretty cool. Um, other than that, though, I thought the kills in this movie were kind of weak. Other than those two. Oh, what, what, I, my favorite kill was the, the, the harpoon. Not mine. It looked good. I, I, I it looked, loved it. It looked And so especially fun. Richard Brooker's whole demeanor, like, pop! It looks so Drop the fun. gun and just walk away. It looked phony to me, though, the whole, like, fake eyeball and... Right. And they say that that's the only time Jason ever used a projectile. But didn't he use a harpoon gun in eight? He did, but he didn't get a kill with it. Oh, okay. All he right, that might be it. He shot it and it missed, and then he stabbed Brian him. Emanizer, South Jersey Jason, the mic drop. Yes. Yeah. yeah he, <laughs> he says, boo, Ryan. Yes. Yes, the harpoon. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but teach his own. So your favorite was the. The headstand kill. Yeah. yeah, which was pretty awesome. <clears throat> okay. So that number would be my second. I don't know. That's tied for me for a second with the head crush kill, which I like that one too. Now it, without the 3D glasses, it doesn't you, you notice a lot of the, you know, how the sausage is made there. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's still kind of cool the fact that he's crushing a guy's head, you know. But looks um, wise, of course. The, my the, number four. Favorite thing about this is Dana Kimmel as Chris Higgins. Yeah, I know, yeah. I had her as my number two final girl when we did that episode. Did you? Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. I, I I forget things. I had her as number I gotta, two. I gotta have notes of the shit that we've done in the past. I'm gonna yeah, go through had, it. I'm gonna 
put this together. <laughs> I have her at number two, and she's still there. She's still my number yeah. two. Um, long chase. And that, that counts because that's one of the biggest parts of being the final girls, the chase scene at the end. And hers was – hers or um, Ginny. They're, they're both up there. And, of course, the greatest final girl that you have is number six too. Because her fight was like half the fucking act there. With well, the, yeah, the her fight was Adrian also King. against a 60-year-old woman. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than a 30-year-old monster. Yeah. But anyway, I digress. Karen says she's intrigued with the head crush. She's going to watch us tonight. And just so you and everybody else knows, if you have Max, all of the films are on there right now. And um, the ones that have 4K screens are on there in 4K. Nice. So, And I believe this is one of them. My number three favorite thing about this film is Jason getting his mask. Now, this... Might be a bit of a hot take, but I'm going to explain this later. It's really the only essential part of this whole movie, is him getting that. Yeah, and that, that's kind of the way I felt about the film myself, too. It's mm-hmm. like, kind of just there. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll go a little deeper than that yeah. when I'm done. But I do so. like it. Like I said, I could turn yeah. it on anytime. I could watch it, pop the popcorn, watch the kills, especially mm-hmm. if you have it in 3D, or you can go to the theater in 3D. But there's not a lot of depth to it. Yeah. My number two favorite thing about this film is Harry's score. Oh, yeah. I mean, I knew you were going to pick that. That's, so, why I didn't, that's why I didn't have it written down in my, my rundown in the beginning. Because I was like, well, he's going to bring up the music because he always does negatively or positively. And, yeah. of course, with Harry, it's going to be positively. So good. Yeah. It's so good. I mean, everybody just talks about the theme, the title theme, and that's great, too. But the whole score is just mm. so fucking good, man. Yeah. The disco really, theme, yes. The disco really theme is what it's inject, about. It injects some life into this film in spots where it's kind of dead. Now, um, I want to, I want to just sidebar real quick. Now, when we, we, when we, um, decided to do this movie, it's because we had a different plan earlier. Ryan's bandmate from Dislim, who's going to be playing a show with him in um, New Jersey. I don't know when or where, but it's on the page. March sixteenth. Hey, he knows because he's going to be there. Dingbats, quick to New Jersey. <laughs> New Jersey Death Fest number eight. All right. And um, since they're both musicians and into music, Ryan and I had spoken in the past about doing a show with music, music's connection to horror. And Mike Connors, which is his guitarist, wasn't sure if he could make it. So I was like, well, as a backup plan, we could do a Friday the 13th movie. And now it's like, you know what? As an even better backup plan, we'll do part three since the, the music is so kind of iconic. Yeah. And if he shows up, cool. We'll discuss the music and this and other movies as well. And if he doesn't, we'll just do what we're doing right now. And here we are. But um, where in New Jersey, he just said, it said Dingbats was the club, right? Clifton, New Jersey. Clifton, New Jersey. Um, Death Fest. It's like two days worth. And there's like 30 bands, 40 bands. Um, yeah, it's good. It's good shit. It's really good shit. I, I'm not a giant fan of this genre of metal, but Ryan's band is really well. 30 years ago, I don't know if you still got it, but 30 years ago, they were really good. 20 years ago, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> 20 years ago. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they're, they're really good. Uh, they're, they're really good musicians, really good band. JP says Dingbats is yes. the name. J- JP, have you played there? He might have. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he he might have. He would be familiar if anybody would be. You know? <laughs> so. so, yeah, so we got that going on, and then uh, – where were we? Uh, we're in your number one thing you liked about the movie. Is that where we left off? We're gonna get into my number one. All right, go ahead. What else? Richard Brooker as Jason. Absolutely. And um, JP said, "Oh yeah, he has played there." There you go. Yeah, Richard Brooker as Jason. He's scary, intimidating, and even a little silly at times, but it works. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I he he was um he was in my top four of Jasons. I think. I think I had him as my number four as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think he's great. Um, him and Ted White are really close, but I give Ted the edge just because of his brutality. I'm you saving know? that for a part four review. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I give Ted the edge slightly by the brutality, but I liked I liked uh, I like Brooker, and it, and in this movie, Jason is a little bit more skittish. He he's yeah. injured. He's you know from part from part two. He's you know he almost died, so he's mm. hiding in the barn. He doesn't. 
you know, like he doesn't really want to confront people at this point. He he's trying to heal, and they they keep coming to where he's at in the barn that you hate. See <laughs> now. These these five things I do, uh, you know, I like about this film. I really like. Mm -hmm. Sean, did you get the meat Ted White? He, he says, did. Uh, okay, he did. awesome. Did. I never got the pleasure. Neither did I. I do have a Ted White autographed uh, Funko that he that I mailed to him though. I do have a Ted White uh, mask personalized mm -hmm. to me, but it's not the best mask. I, I still need to fix that up. Nice. Okay. So, where were we at? Bottom five. Bottom five. Bottom five things. Now, this was hard for me because there were like a dozen things I really didn't like about this movie. <laughs> but I narrowed it down to five because I only talked about five things. Yeah. Because so, that's our gimmick. We can't change the gimmick in the middle of the fucking game now. Top five, top five. Yeah. We, uh, can't, we can't just, you know, have a show called The Year in Horror 1980, talk about two 1980 movies, and then go 90s movies, 70s movies, 80s movies, like some people do when they only steal a, our gimmick. But only a complete fucking asshole would do that. So. Yeah. <laughs> so we got that going for us. Yeah. <laughs> so my number five thing, bottom five things I didn't like about this, five going, at least going to one. The lack of chemistry, lack of character development, and the fact that Everybody was a walking fucking stereotype in this movie. Like <laughs> that's something everything. you didn't like. That, that's that that's eighties horror though. No. <laughs> other other. I mean, there's there's plenty of films in this franchise where there's so many characters. Even if it's just one, actually has some development. Shelley had yeah. a fraction of a little bit, but he's still mm -hmm. just a doof. You know, I like him, but he's a doofus. Um, but I don't. Yeah, care I don't know if he necessarily has development or just has like memorable things that he's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I at the end of the day, though, I don't care about any of these people. Brian, Isn't Brian, um, Brian asks, "What is your least favorite character?" And um, Brian, type yours in too, because I'm curious what what you think. I know who mine is. <laughs> what is it? We're gonna get there. <laughs> it's in the list. Oh, okay. So you gotta wait. You gotta yeah, wait. You gotta wait. Um. For me to single one individual out, you're gonna have to wait a little bit. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just the oh, everybody's a walking stereotype. There's no development, no chemistry between the characters either. I didn't think. Mm -hmm. I really didn't feel it, and I just don't care well, about. They didn't really seem people. like they, they they matched. Like like um Chuck and Chili, they, they kind of seemed like they were like so much older than the rest of the group. That's like just, yeah, that's another thing too. It's like how are these like high school ish going on college age kids friends with these like 35 year olds and know? even though De debbie De De debbie um looked and seemed a little bit older she was a teenager yeah, yeah. I, I have, and everybody else had a teenager vibe somebody asked me once like how you know why why were they friends with these older people and i was just like because they had the weed <laughs> <laughs> that's all i can think of so that's five um my number four least favorite thing is that ending dream sequence thing? I fucking okay. hate it. And I he, fucking here's the hate thing. it. Here's the thing with that, and I watched it today, and you can kind of like like with the Jason dream sequence with Ari, mm -hmm. and everybody's like, you know, like you know, like Pam told her uh, told her about yes. Ari, yes. so she could create that image in yes. her mind, right? And whether it's silly, doesn't make sense. It's a dream, and she's going by what she was told. Mm -hmm. And and she that picture would be in her head. Yeah, this broad they didn't even say Jason's name in right. this one. So how you're the right fuck on does the she know what Pam you. looks like, and how did Pam get her head back? Yeah, three things: Pam didn't, Pamela didn't drown. Pamela got her head chopped off, and Chris has no idea Pamela who even she is, existed. what she looked like, why she would have the the, the yeah. knit sweater. Yeah, none of it made it sense. Makes zero sense. It was horrible. It was I terrible. and I didn't have as big of a problem with it in the past as I did as watching it today. Oh, I hate it. And as soon as it came on, I was just started to think, and I was like, "This is fucking dumb." It's terrible. Gina so Rawson says, "Hey guys." Yeah, that's four. Mm -hmm. uh, my number three least favorite thing is them trying to shoehorn in all those three D elements just because. Right. Just because. And. You know, I don't have a, I don't necessarily have a problem with that because it is a fun movie to see in a theater in 3D. It could be, but most people aren't seeing this in the theater now. And you know? it takes a lot away from it when you don't see it in 3D. Mm -hmm. When it you just, don't see it in 3D, just like the head crush kill. 
it doesn't look it doesn't look good anymore. Let me in ask 3D. You. It looks good because you got the red and the blue blur in your vision a little bit. Let me ask you this now. Okay. Say they didn't make this a 3D movie and they just made it like every other one. Does it really take any impact away? Oh no, 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 definitely not. Because I mean, and of course, now by saying that, we're gonna assume that the force 3D shots aren't there too, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Take no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't do anything extra for it. No. Here's the thing. Though, I mean, it does took, fun for the theater. That's it. If they took all those forced 3D shots, though, they'd need to show it, uh, even a few more minutes of part two at the beginning to pad the runtime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's cool. I'd rather see the last, you know, the last bit of part two than most of the scenes from this movie. But well, you know, here I go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number two. Here you go, Brian. That's what you've been waiting for. The acting in general, I thought was pretty bad other than a couple of people, but especially Rachel Howard, Chili. Okay, and God <laughs> awful. Shelly's dead. Oh my god. Oh my god, Shelly's dead. And Brian Brian can't see your com you, you can't uh, Ryan cannot see your comments, Brian. Yeah, I don't read comments. And, so. Yeah, because he, he's on his iPhone anyway, so it doesn't show up. But um Chuck and Chili was what he said. Just yeah, just chili for me, especially. But Chuck is not much better. But chili was just absolutely terrible. Just that no, acting. Karen, you, you, you'll get the gist of the movie without seeing it in three D. Just if you ever hear about it coming to a theater near you with um the three D version, and they have a new three D print of it, so it's a digital print, so it'll be available more often. You should definitely uh, get out and check it out. It, it's definitely fun to see these older movies in the theater. S sidebar for a second. Um, Great Northern Theater in Ohio, where none of you guys are, but <laughs> they're reopening after Regal shut down. And oh, they are. Yeah, but I'm hoping that it's an independent guy that bought it, so we could see movies like this there. Yeah. That would be great. Like like oh, the yeah. Capitol does it sometimes. So yeah, so yeah, if you get a chance to see it in a theater in 3D, it, it's a great, it's great, and the, the new the new um scan of it is 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 nice and it's it's beautiful. Oh, the 40th anniversary thing mm. just came out like two years ago. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my number two. My number one least favorite thing about this film is the emphasis on that fucking barn. <laughs> like, I swear to God, like half the runtime of this movie is in that fucking barn. Yeah, well, like I said, you know, like that was the whole idea was Jason was trying to hide out to heal and they kept going in the barn to fuck with them. Mm. If they wouldn't go in the barn, they... They'd been all right, but it, he didn't it, really come out of the barn to kill anybody, did he? Did he? Oh, well, yeah. Later, he went yeah. into the house and sliced dude up and everything. But that was after they just kept fucking with him. Yeah. Once we got, you yeah, know, the, I have to get rid of all of you now because I'm just trying to be here. Yeah. Once that third act was <laughs> about to kick in, yeah. No, yeah, no. For, for me, the thing, the, the only one thing I hated, mm -hmm. I didn't even just dislike, but hate, is the dream sequence because there's no reason in hell she mm -hmm. would ever. Have Pamela, Pamela in her mind. She would Period. never even know Pamela Voorhees existed. Right. They didn't even have Jason's name. No. And this is fresh news. The part two killings happened the day before. Right. So there's no news on who this is or where. They, no. No. She would have no idea. It's not like Twitter. She didn't pull her cell phone out and learn all this story in one day. Um. Was uh part part one was five years ago though, so she would know that Pamela Pamela killed somebody, but she wouldn't have uh if she didn't she was so out of the loop that she didn't know who Jason Voorhees was, exactly. so she didn't know who Jason Voorhees' mother was and why she was killing people. Why he might you know, it's just not there. No clue. She'd be what there. about the alternate dream sequence of the two which you have which, which would you have preferred? The all the alternate one was uh. With, with, with the alternate makeup for Brooker, but I don't remember what happens. Do you remember that? I do. Um, does the alternate version not have Pam in it? I don't remember. Brian, that. Brian, does the alternate dream sequence not have Pam in it? And if that's the case, uh, that's the one I that's the one I like. I'd rather them not have it. Yeah, he cuts her head off, and he has um he has that. I don't like that makeup. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the, the alternate makeup oh, yeah, for, yeah, um, yeah, that makeup. for him. I think he looks so much better than the way they ended up going with. I'd rather have no dream sequence at all. Yeah, and it was kind of the gimmick at that point. It happened twice before. So they, they were going with it, but you could have did it 
you know, like he said, like when Jason comes and cuts her head off, that you don't have to, you know, she, you don't have to have this character that she would have no knowledge of. Mm -hmm. You know, if you wanted to keep the dream sequence thing alive, or hell, you could have just had crazy monster just jump out of the lake anyway. You could have had Ari again jump out of the lake, <laughs> you know, like whatever. But I guess that I guess that, that wouldn't make sense either sense because either. she doesn't know what he looks like. No, because she wasn't told like Adrian was. So now, before I grade this thing, I do kind of have a closing. I can, I guess not argument, but statement I want to make. But before I do, is there any thoughts you want to get in there? No, no. I, I we covered every. I I, I really like the way this one went, and um. All of our guys that came came in to watch stayed almost the whole time, so we must not have sucked too bad this week. They've all been common, and they, they, this has been a good show. Now I want you to grade yeah. this one. I want you, <laughs> I want, I want you to grade this one before I read this. All right, I don't um, want, I don't want to change your opinion. One okay, way. so my 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 grade again. I, I I'm going to grade it as a critic, not how much I like the movie, and I'm going to throw that one in there too. Yeah, fair. I want to throw that one in there too. I can watch this movie literally anytime. I've seen it a million times. I can turn it on at any time. There is no depth at all to this movie. If you want to see guy in the woods killing about eight people and little funny ha ha here and there, it's the movie for you. Um, as much as I, I, I God, man, um, the acting was not good. The acting was not good, and all these movies are low budget, so we can't we can't give them that crutch to stand on. Correct. Ah uh, man, I'm gonna go C plus for how much I liked it, and C minus, mm -hmm. close to a D plus okay. for critically. Okay. Um, I see a lot of people. I've seen you know not most people, but I've seen a lot of people say this is their favorite one. And that irks me because I have, I'm going to read this here. That Ernest I, says he gives it a C just because of the intro to the mask. And Brian also gives it a C. All right. I feel a little bit better now. All right. Because <laughs> I, I want to, I want to make this little statement. Okay. <laughs> and here we go. Other than Jason getting his iconic mask in this film, it literally serves no real purpose in the advancement of the story or the mythology in any way, shape, or form. If you took this movie out and went straight from two to four, nothing relevant to the story would be missed. It's a fun ride at times, but kind of Gina a sa Gina says, I'm sorry to interrupt. Gina says C- minus just because Shelly was funny. All right. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. It's a fun ride at times, but it's fucking pointless. It's a C minus. It's a C minus. Okay. Yeah, I think everybody's pretty much in agreement with it. In here, but the general consensus. I've always heard people a rate it a lot higher than what it is. Yeah. Um, does your the, the, so your critic score and how much you like the movie is about the same anyway, though, right? C minus. Like, just just C minus. minus. Um, I rank this the same as I did one of the other Friday films, but I won't say which I like better because we're eventually going to do the rankings. After okay. Done. Which was the one you ranked the same? Do you Part remember? Seven. Part, seven. Part seven. The first one we did. Right. Um, it was also a C minus. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. So that was um, Friday 13th, part three. And uh, man, we really had a. <laughs> he gave Jason Goes to Hell an F. Minus. F minus? F minus. <laughs> Worst slasher movie ever made. I, I, I vehemently disagree with him. But Worst okay. slasher movie ever made. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he hates it. He, yeah, bad. <laughs> but um, yeah, so again, we had a lot of activity in the comments. Everybody that's been commenting right now has been here since the very beginning of the show, and this is like the first time that, that that same group of people has hung with us the whole time. So that was fucking awesome, guys, and I really appreciate that from you guys all. And, uh, yeah, really really made my fucking night. Everybody gets orange slices. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. So do you have anything else you wanted to talk about? Hmm. No, there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> He's just out of here. <laughs> All right. 
Thanks, Nina. Yeah, I, I, I really, like, I am moved. I am moved by how how you guys have just stuck with us the whole time for the show, and how how many of you, and how you guys kept commenting the whole time, and especially with you know little advertisement for the show this week, and no guests this week, just me and Ryan, and, and really, it was really cool. You guys, you guys really made my night, made my week. So. You guys are great. Really enjoyed the night, but big pass on the orange slices. Right on. Right on. So, again, Ryan, Ryan left me. Ryan left me. I'm here alone. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap this up, guys. But uh, um, check out um, – we, we're working on some good things. we got a couple guests in the works. On February 15th, we're going to have Brett Wagner from um, Texas Chainsaw. He's going to be on the show. Um, we're working on that thing with uh, Ryan's band. Um if we're gonna do like a music thing, might be able to see if we can get JP involved since he's a he's a musician himself. Um, JP Cross has been on the show a couple times from Killer's Confession. If you haven't listened to them, go ahead. Ryan's popping back in. <laughs> Let's see, just gotta say, here. you're back. You're still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. I was, I, I, I was so, talking to the people out there. You're oh, still yeah, here. They're still here too. <laughs> it's like the end of Ferris Bueller. The movie's over. Go home. <laughs> But all right, guys, we're going to get the fuck out of here for real. And uh, JP plays music? Oh, no, yeah, okay. <laughs> He's an Achilles Confession fan. That's why he jumped on this. Also. <laughs> I, was I didn't catch the sarcasm at first. I was like, oh, yeah, he definitely does. You need to check him out. <laughs> who who hard passed on the orange slice? Oh, Karen, she says no. No good. Well, I got lime slices, too. <laughs> lime slices. <laughs> all right. <laughs> It's over. Go home. Thought the same thing. <laughs> right on. But seriously, I think, honestly, man, this might be our best show we ever did. The funnest show we ever did. I'm really, I really enjoyed myself tonight. But I'm gonna get out of here. I think I'm gonna go try to go make some money driving people around, and or I might watch a movie. Speaking of movies, uh, Tetsuo the Iron Man. Yeah. Really fucking weird Japanese horror flick. Checked it out the other day. It's like 50 minutes. Very little dialogue. It's subtitled. But you don't even need to pay attention to it too much. Throw it on and just the, – the, it's so artistic that the shots, the, the way it's framed. I really think you'd like this, Ryan, because you're, you know, snobby. <laughs> Jeez, so, thank you. <laughs> so I, I, I'm curious to see what you would say about it, really. So it's on it's on Shutter if you have access. If you don't, I'll try to figure out how to get my password so you can, uh, you can check it out. But don't tell people we're sharing passwords. That's frowned upon. <laughs> but seriously, seriously, it, it's really it, it's a really cool movie. I, I watched it just because of the name having to do with Akira, and I, I loved Akira. It's one of the greatest anime movies ever. Definitely. And was not disappointed, man. Uh, I was on it while I was watching it, I was on a 60-minute phone call with Chris Wintrick. So I needed something to distract me. <laughs> you know how those go. People in the comments do. don't know, but no. They go where you need to throw in a movie. <laughs> but all right. For real, though, this time, for real, we are out of here. And tune in next week at 7 o'clock on Thursday. And, uh, Ryan? The neighborhood that goes. 